And you would call the roll, I assume? Um, I, I, I've got the attendance here, so we're all set. You're all set. Then we'll move down to approval of the agenda. Okay. Uh, Need a motion to approve. You have to, uh, yeah, this time make a Brownfield Real Development Authority can act to approve the agenda. I'll need a motion in a second. I'll, need a, I'll make the motion to approve the I'll agenda. I'll second. There you go. <laughs> oh. All in favor say aye, aye. aye. And uh, moved into public hearing. Yeah, we have no public hearings tonight. All right, you're going to have to bring up the screen there, bud. Can you see it? No. It's not moving. You might have to scroll. It's not moving. Uh, I'm, I'm as down as whatever you've got up. <laughs> he went as far as he could go. <laughs> yeah, but we can go. There you go. That, that's how I control the pace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Public hearing, we have none. Okay, public comments. This time the chair will ask if there's any public comments from the public. No public comments. All righty. Correspondence. This time, the chair will ask if there's any correspondence has been received to be included in the record. So the only correspondence was the application, which we'll be talking at an agenda item in just a minute here. All right. Thank you for that. And then approval of the minutes. At this time, the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority can act to approve the July 13th, 2021 meeting minutes. You can make the motion and show some. I'll make the motion. I'll second. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but that way it doesn't look fit. You know, I should. Fit everybody at you. We can't okay. let Shelly make two motions. And <laughs> not to. <laughs> Financial reports. This time the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority can act to approve. Roger, we need a motion. We need a vote on the minutes. Oh, the oh. minutes. I, sorry. Yeah, the motion was made and seconded to approve the minutes. Now we move to financial report. Get a vote, though. Get a bit of vote. Oh, okay. Well, let's vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Now financial reports. This time the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority can act to approve the financial reports. Which is, Ed, you'll lead us in that? Sure, so I'll bring them up here on the screen. All right, so you can see the balance sheet in front of you. There's a fair amount of money of cash on the balance sheet, but that's because we're in the middle of tax collection and there's a lot of that um, that we've captured for the various brownfield lines that we haven't distributed yet. I don't distribute it until after I settle up with the county, so it happens in generally May is when I distribute the stuff annually. Um, we also have some application fees, um, which you'll see on the revenue and expense item here. Um, so you can see on the charge for service line item, which is the second one down, we received $2,000. That was the application fee for the Hampton Inn. Mm -hmm. um, but last year we received $22,000, which was the application fee for the Gateway Project, and then also the $20,000 that it's going to work need to um, basically pay Fishbeck to write the work plan and the Brownfield plan or whatever. That's um, we're moving through, but that's actually at a slower pace now than the Hampton Inn. Um, so that's what's reflected on the books. And then on the expense side, there was just some uh, travel and training. I went to a conference down in Ludding, or, uh, Lansing, Michigan Economic Development Association conference, and they have a lot of interesting things with Brownfield and economic development, so it's very useful. And then uh, do Who went to that? You? I did, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I find that to be very helpful. So all right. that's yeah. really all the activity there's been. Uh, there'll be more once we start getting into these plans, but for now, that's all there is. Really. Any questions on that? Mm -hmm. Not that I'm aware of any questions. No. Yeah. No, no questions. We probably should have a motion. Motion to accept, to accept the expect expenditure report. Balance sheet and the expenditure. I'll make a motion to accept the financials. I'll second that. Okay. I'll signify in favor by saying aye. 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 Okay. All opposed? All right, Ed. Okay, old business. Do we have any old business? No. No. Business. New business. Consider oh. Hang on. That's still the old one. Yeah. yeah. Consideration. That's the old minutes, just a minute. Minutes. Gotta get gotta the go oh, there oh I'm sorry. Yeah. There we go. Sorry. Okay. Now review and expense. Did you also show us that, or is that another no, form? No, we're, we're down to new business. And we're down to yep. old business? None. Now we're down to new business. Review of Brownfield Redevelopment Application Received from Hotel Ventures, 
Manis DLLC, the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority has received an application for redevelopment project funding from Hotel Ventures Manis DLLC. <coughs> This would be for the New Hampton Inn to be constructed at the site of the Lakeshore Motel at 101 South Lakeshore Drive. The application has been reviewed by Fishbeck and the city. The project anticipates an investment of almost $20 million and the proposed TIF, TIF of financing includes public infrastructure, environmental assessment, demolition, abatement, and site preparation costs. At this time, the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority can act to accept this application, authorize Fishbeck to continue work on the Brownfield Plan, Act 381, Work Plan and Development and Reimbursement Agreement, and bill the developer for this work and not, and not to exceed amount of $20,000 per Brownfield policy. So there. Okay, um, what I'd like to do is pull up the application and walk you through it. Um, we have Roman here from Fishbeck and um, he'll be kind of helping go through this as well. Uh, but I just want to point out the, mm -hmm. The highlights of it, and kind of talk through the process a little bit, and get any of your questions answered. There's, we're not approving a brownfield plan today or anything like that. We're just acting to accept the application, and then um, Roman will finish up the brownfield plan. We'll look at that stuff, and we'll have that on the next agenda, which we need to determine when that meeting is going to be. So this is our standard um, brownfield redevelopment funding application, and. Uh, we received this and um, took a look at it, so we'll just kind of run through it. It's actually being stubborn right now. Hang on. So the owner and developer is Hotel Ventures Manistee LLC. That is a new new corporation that was kind of um, created. Suburban Inns was originally going to be the developer, and um, they did some financial. Uh, transactions within their family to kind of separate this one from Suburban Inn. So it's a, it's a separate new company. But Peter Bukema, who's the principal and was the CEO of Suburban Inns, is running this. So um, that's who the applicant is. Um, it's is Suburban Inn still um, major financer in it? I, you know, I don't know who their, who their financers are. What I, what I can tell you is that the dad was in a different spot in his career than the son. That, and yes. so um, they wanted to try to meet everybody's needs in this and, and provide some protection. And, um, you know, but uh, Peter, who's the principal that was the CEO of Suburban Inns and is the principal of Hotel Ventures, um, you know, has some collateral and things like that and has investors. So um, <clears throat> obviously we know where the property is. It's on the old Lakeshore Motel. Um, and then we just have the different attachments here. So I'll, I'll run through those. and. Uh, the first one here, which I'm, we're going to talk at some length, I'm not going to talk through the, a lot right now, are the improvements that they're asking for. Um, some things with public parking, um, half of a water main loop, which will go uh, basically from the development up um, out to the road, and then it goes down Harbor Drive and loops back around. So that service right now is not looped, and that right. will help with for fire flows and also get rid of a dead end. It's on Harbor Drive. Mm -hmm. um, there's a stormwater detention basin that will serve not only the hotel but also the um, the park area where we have some ponding. And that would be just to the south of the hotel. And then there'd be a curb cut going into the big parking lot where the boats park right now. And the city will have an agreement with them to allow them to use that for overflow parking. And what they're going to do um, is create more parking around the south loop for the public and kind of trade off for that. So that won't be their primary parking lot, it'll only be for overflow. Um, they, they give a list of their estimated um, investment. Um, land acquisition was a little over two million, almost $400,000 in site prep, about 20 grand in remediation, a little under 17 million in construction costs, 300,000 in engineering and 50,000 in marketing. Um, those are kind of the ballparks. Okay, so for eligible activities, there really isn't a lot of environmental on this. You've got 
phase one and geotechnical costs, and you've got about 14,000 that estimate for lead and asbestos, asbestos abatement. The rest of the activities really are either site preparation or um, public infrastructure and demolition as well. So that implies a few things with the Brownfield plan, which I can let Roman talk about in terms of the funding for that and, and the approval process. Um, one of the things that we are going to have to work through, and I say we, it's going to have to be the city prior to the Brownfield plan coming back in front of this board, is the cost estimates. Because the developer has asked not only for a Brownfield plan, but also for a commercial rehabilitation district tax abatement. And that's going on a parallel path with this Brownfield plan. The Commercial Rehabilitation Act tax abatement basically abates all local taxes, but it does not abate school taxes. And so that has some implications for this Brownfield plan in terms of which taxes can be captured, how much they're going to generate, and how long that time period is going to be. The other piece of that is some of the items on here that um, they're asking for to be included in the Brownfield plan, we had had preliminary conversations with them about the developer being responsible for those costs. So at some point, they're asking for a, a pie of incentives that's you know a certain size, and, and the city has to decide whether that's the right size or we want to shrink that down. Right. So that, that'll have to be figured out before the Brownfield plan comes back to this board, because it could be that we trim the Brownfield plan could be that the tax abatement gets trimmed, or, or maybe neither if there's an appetite for that on council. So those are some conversations that we have to have with the developer still. Um, right now we have them all built in, but that, that could change a little bit potentially if they wanted to go down or if they needed to go down. The tax collection was a big incentive to get that project passed. So I don't know how much of that is school portion of the percentage? So there's, a, there's some dynamic factors at play here, which are nice. But first of all is that piece of property generates practically no taxes right, right now. It's been there forever. But what happened is basically the land as of December 31st, 2021 is going to uncap. Oh, okay. And the land is not subject to the commercial rehabilitation tax abatement. So you're going to have a much higher base level because you can see they paid over $2 yeah. million dollars for the property. So immediately all the taxing jurisdictions are going to get a benefit regardless of what tax uh, incentives we give them because that's not going to be in the base for Roughly the fifth plan. Roughly 200,000 a year or so, wasn't it? Um, I don't have those numbers. Oh, okay. I, can, I can try to pull them up. Um, so that will be a, a nice bump. The, the commercial rehabilitation tax abatement, which would be the first layer, basically uh, it abates all the local taxes, right. but they still have to pay 100% of the school taxes. So this brownfield plan would be capturing the school taxes, in theory, if it gets approved, as well as the growth, you know, the inflationary growth of the, uh, of the local taxes on mm -hmm. the property part of it. Yeah. And the other thing that none of this takes into consideration is there will be some, some level of personal property taxes. We haven't estimated that because that's kind of a bonus. Plus, with the way the state's been dealing with personal property taxes and some of the reforms they did almost eight years ago now, those will phase out over time. So it's really hard to model. So we don't have any of that included in here. They're not subject to abatement or capture um, anyway though on that. So What would be subject to personal property tax on that parcel? Um, any of their furniture, fixtures, and equipment. So there's going to be a fair amount actually. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. So that's kind of the basic numbers. Uh, you can see the taxable value for the current parcel is about 193,000, and they're estimating the future tax value at 3.3 million. So this is this is a really critical, probably the most critical number in this whole discussion. Um, Molly, ultimately, the city's assessor will determine what the taxable value of that facility is. It doesn't necessarily equate to 50% of what they invest, right? So there's there's going to be a it's going to be a long process for her to put a value on this once it's built. 3.3 million, I will say, is very conservative, so it's likely to be higher. I doubt it will be lower. So we wanted to kind of be very conservative, and that's the number that they're using as well. So um, that but that gen that drives all of the the calculations on the TIF table as to seeing what kind of um, projects this will support and what kind of reimbursement. Is Donald Trump involved in this project at all? I have no Sounds knowledge Sounds like he can that. move some money around there. <laughs> so this is just an attachment one. It's kind of a description of the project. <laughs> um, you know, if you sat through any of the planning commission meetings, you know 
that it's going to be a five-story hotel. It's going to have approximately 101 rooms, um, fitness center, meeting event space, top four restaurant and bar, um, beach with fire, fire pits. <coughs> so um, this basically shows you the, uh, you know, kind of the overview of the plan in here. It's a little bit rough, but that's that's what it's going to be, and just kind of a location map. Yeah. Um, this is pictures of the existing hotel. We will actually walked through that the other day with uh, with a representative from the developer, and it's Molly has classified it as functionally obsolete. And after viewing the tile and the bathrooms, I would agree. <laughs> functionally obsolete. Yeah. It's way throwback. Um, I included in here. These are these are uh, renderings and drawings um, for for planning purposes that they had done. I don't know that you know there's a need to go through these, but it definitely shows some of the um, soil and erosion plans. These are basically the approved site plans that the planning commission had. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to get to you know here you can kind of see where the, the hotel is likely to go. shows their, their parking lot behind the hotel, which is roughly where the parking lot is now. And um, again, this is just under a three acre parcel. Yeah. You can see over here on this area right here, this is the stormwater infiltration basin that we talked about. Uh, yeah. This is some of the parking that they had proposed to build uh, to replace or to offset some of the parking that they might use on overflow days on the big parking lot. We'll talk more about some of the public infrastructure here in a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to keep going down here. For now, Ed, with all these pictures you're showing us in the building and the redevelopment, what did that do to, I was just mentioning Linda, to the beach plan that we, uh, the Planning Commission approved about three years ago? Um, well, it's, it's, been, it's been way more than three years. Has it been the, that It's been probably closer to ten, almost. Has it been that Yeah, long? it really ten has. Months. And in fact, we are um, in the process of drafting a Coastal Zone Management Grant, correct? Yeah. To update the beach master plans. And so it will take this into consideration once <coughs> that's done. You'd be amazed if you actually look back at those beach plans, how much of that's actually been accomplished. Quite a bit of it has been. So it's really time to refresh and update okay. those. Yeah. Yep. So that's, that's a really good question, though. Um, yeah. Okay. I just wonder. So, again, it's just kind of the floor plans of the hotel. Yeah. Uh, and again, this was all in the public in front of the Planning Commission. Scrolling down through. Kind of an idea of what the facade and stuff is going to look like. Well, while you're looking, are they waiting for these plans or these applications to be approved before they start any type of work, or do they? When are they planning to, let's say, take down the old hotel? There's so I'm going to let Roman talk about oh. that because there's there's a definite timeline and approvals. I'll talk about the overall timeline and let Roman talk about the specifics. What's driving all of this? It's being pushed from both ends. It's being pushed from when they want to open. Yeah. Because they don't want to open in November. No. <laughs> they want to open in April or well, May. Well, the planning commission gave them a deadline of opening by, on the 23rd of December. I mean, 2023, wasn't it? Yeah, they'll, they'll be open yes. by then, but they would rather not be open by November. They want to be open in May. They need oh, to sure. catch the summer season. So you've got at least a minimum of a 12-month build-out. Right. right. So that puts you back to May of 2022. Right. We're at December <coughs> of 2021. So, Roman, I'm going to let you talk about the approval process and when they can start work and all that stuff, given the constraints we have with uh, the different agencies. So... We've been working with uh, the development team to try to uh, estimate as best we can because you're dealing with the state and, and their approval process. But uh, assuming that this application would get approved, uh, we'd roll right into a brownfield plan uh, amendment preparation, which a lot of that framework's already together. When you're getting the application and this whole process together, that's getting assembled, so the ta tax increment finance tables are, are being generated like at a draft scale. Um, so th the goal would be to have that assembled for an early January approval from the Brownfield Authority so that uh, that particular document 
can then be merged into a work plan that goes to the state uh, for their approval. And that's the one that really takes the longest window of time. So we've already had some discussions, Ed has, and, and the development team has had discussions with MEDC, which uh, as Ed mentioned, there's, there's, re there's really no environmental associated with this that seeks EGLE's uh, approval. Uh, all of that work is already in a pre-approved status, so it doesn't need to go in front of them. But MEDC, uh, yeah, I mean, that can be a two to four month process, roughly. Is that for grant purposes? Why does it have to go to Yeah, MEDC? so they, they have to prove non-environmental TIF. Yeah. So uh, it, for projects that come to them for TIF, it's not just the community re revitalization program grants and those types of things. So. Uh, they need to check off boxes and, and so on. And uh, so those conversations are already being had to hopefully uh, cement things. So when a draft gets in front of them, it's pretty much what they wanted to see and, and they can just go through that, that motion. So uh, January could be a busy month because we, we would like to have a, a work plan prepped as well to get it in their hands, which would come before you for approval, uh, a reimbursement agreement, which you know, the city and the attorney would need to look at because this is, it's got a lot of different components yeah. when you're talking about abatement and we still got to work through how much uh, makes sense. I mean, if you add up the savings of a 10 year uh, abatement and then what the eligible activity costs and you roll in what the city's looking for, you know, you could be upwards of $2 million. So just got to see where that lands. Uh, I think one of the goals for the Brownfield Authority is to have potential to uh, capture for placement into a local Brownfield revolving fund. That, that can be up to five years tagged on the end of, of the plan. Uh, maybe it's one year, maybe it's two, whatever, but I, I think that's probably a, a good thing because it can provide funds that could be utilized for other projects in the community. Uh, so, are you able, can I ask a question, are you able to cap the abatement, say um, say the hotel overperforms and their occupancy rate is much higher than they anticipated? Um, and that tax abatement, I'm assuming, is for a period of time. Are you able to say um, a million dollars a year? You know, you abate the tax up to a million and then anything over that comes I to the city. I don't think you can do that. You can, you can limit the number of years and then extend the plan later, but the what it captures is kind of spelled out in statute. Okay. So it's really going to be, and it's not so much dependent on how well the hotel performs financially, it's what the assessor values the property. Okay. On. It's based on the property okay. taxes. Um, so there, I mean, you could, for example, because city council might say we want to do it for seven, and if the developer's amenable to that, I guess they could come back and ask for three more. I suspect that where this is going to land is that it's going to be a 10-year abatement because I don't know that their numbers are going to work otherwise. Okay. But if there is does need to be any trimming on that, it might might happen here at this level. Okay. Um, just because those are what the preliminary... So the abatement is specific to property taxes? Yes. These, okay. are, these are not income tax abatements. Okay. They're both property tax, uh, either abatements or, or financing. So, so that's kind of a long answer to your question. Any questions for him? Oh, she's doing a great job. All right. But I have one questions. Answer, if you don't mind, is, is you follow with all these MDOC and all the state government. Do you have a person, contact person, that's following you with this project? Or yes. do you see someone new every time you call? No. No? Do you got a person that's going to follow through? So I'll talk about MEDC and you can talk about Eagle. So we have Dan Leonard, who's our regional representative. and he shepherds projects in his area through the process at MEDC. We've had one meeting with, well, more than one <coughs> meeting with him, but we had a recent one. We have a call scheduled for Friday just to make sure things are on track and okay. give the developer a little bit better idea of what the timeline is. Um, they'd like to obviously get started on the demolition sooner rather than later, but we've got to make sure that the MEDC would be okay with that in terms of approving that retroactively. So there's some of those conversations we have to have. Plus, the developer needs to have a good understanding of that there is a process and they need to know kind of if there's not retroactive approval when they can actually start demolition. Hopefully we can kind of get to that a little bit more on Friday.
then I want to be able to give them a better idea because they're chomping up a bit to get going. Because oh, sure. it's going to be tight building in the window that they've got as it is. Well, that's what I mean. Like he says, uh, three, four months with the state, or by the time you get it through here, and you have so many months, you have to, you know, 30, 60 days. I mean, every couple of months adds up. So, it really yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we so can. So, can we make a motion for a mild winter? <laughs> <laughs> it can be mild and it can snow at Crystal Mountain. And I'd be right. at, okay, so we'll and, just and maybe we'll on the limit lake it. so we can ice yeah, it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so. The other thing, that, you know, the next attachment in the plan here is a schedule, and I, this has already slipped, I'm sure, but this is, you know, it's a pretty detailed schedule if you look through it, kind of Can't got a bunch it. of different things in terms of demo and bid package and construction, and, you know, we request that as part of the bid application process. Again, I suspect this has slipped because this was kind of their preliminary one when they were talking to the Planning Commission. Um, yeah. We can certainly get an updated one from them once, once this goes ahead. Um, a couple of other things we asked for are economic projections and job creation. Mm -hmm. So they're um, based on kind of MEDC numbers that they're estimating a little over $10 million total spent annually in the community based on the occupancy of their hotel. And, uh, and then there's a little bit more numbers on what that means in terms of air and local transportation, recreation, retail, restaurants. And again, these are based on the numbers that MEDC uses when they're evaluating these things. So it's a pretty big, pretty big financial impact if you if you trust those numbers. And even if it's half of that, it's a pretty big financial. Yeah. Impact. Mm -hmm. Well, anything would be a financial impact. Tell you the truth. Um, environmental challenges. This section I'm going to let um, Roman talk about. They they obviously had Otwell Mavi as their consulting engineers go through and evaluate the whole building for, for lead paint and for asbestos and things like that. And you know, probably the next 60 or 70 pages is all the summary of those results. Um, I think the takeaway is at the end of the day, there's not much there, but Roman's kind of looked at that and he'll look at it closer as we move ahead. But you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I mean you, you really hit on the head. I mean, it, it, to summarize it and boil it down, it, it really is, pretty nominal, I mean, you would expect it from a building that was constructed back in the 50s, lead and asbestos are present. So those materials have to be abated prior to demolition. So and I, this rolls into all of the costs that we've looked at. I mean, they're, they're all eligible. They're eligible. Um, the numbers have been provided to us and they seem to be in the framework, but how it works once this all gets approved, the, the, any uh, reimbursement will be vetted. Uh, we'll, we'll have the invoices, we'll have documented costs that will be worded in a way such that they align with the brownfield plan and what's been approved. And we, we comb through that, to make sure that there's not any double dipping or anything like that, uh, nothing that wasn't approved that's getting pushed through. So we, we take caution in doing that when, when, when that time comes. And when they come up with these numbers, such as what they propose, is these numbers aren't out of their hat, you know, like, you know, I'm the hotel, I'll put down good numbers. So, but I mean, these are average numbers from what the, in the economy could Is that what? So, it's these, quotes, right? Right. They're, they're numbers that they're partially were prepared by their uh, contractor, Pioneer Construction, uh -huh. having done different things. But keep in mind, the numbers that they, send to us or that they want to finally get approved by this body and city council if, if it goes that far are a maximum they're an estimate they're a maximum but if the if the if the demo number is seventy thousand on the budget and it comes in at 50 right, right. and they're all approved and they only get 50 they don't get 70. Oh, so that's how that process looks oh. and, and keep in mind and you may recall when we did the south washington area one there was cost that didn't get approved uh, when they went through and looked at it because maybe they were being double counted or they, they weren't deemed to be eligible because some, sometimes it's hard especially on that project this is going to be a lot easier but with that project there's a lot of stuff in the building mm -hmm. and some of it was and some of it wasn't and, yeah, and yeah. they don't always break out the invoicing necessarily in mm -hmm. as much detail as you'd like so they had to go back and get information and we did disallow some of those costs on that project not a lot but some yeah. So, um, you know, we really lean heavily on our consultants to, to look at that because that's what, that's what we're paying them for. That's their area of expertise. And that's also why we want them to write the brownfield plan on our behalf and not let the developers consult and do it so that we have a more, a le another layer of protection. Really. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, yeah. Developers. So yeah. There's, there's page after page of 
of yeah. environmental <laughs> stuff here. Um, we believe you. <laughs> and not 75 um, you know, It just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And yeah. that'll all get sorted out when they start to do the demo and the abatement. Um, but I wanted to keep going down here. Okay. And more study and, and that sort of thing. Um, there is some information here on soil borings. So part of what they have in their ground in their <coughs> brownfield plan is they have some money in there for site prep and, and beefed up footings and stuff. And so Fishback's gonna have to take a really close look at that, make sure those truly are eligible under the Brownfield Act and make sure that that's appropriate. It probably is because of the sandy nature of the soil out there and you know, you're supporting a five-story building. Yeah. Yeah. But that's something that they're, and, and it's nice to have Fishback because they have a deep team of engineers that can, they can draw on to look at that as well. Um, so that, again, that's, that stuff will be looked at closer to make sure it truly is eligible. Uh -huh. So again, this is all just standard. Yeah. There's a couple pages at the very end I wanted to. Okay, so this is just some of their um, other hotel pro properties that, that this are suburban ends. They can see they, you know, they've done an embassy suites. Um, that's another look at it. There's a very well respected courtyard by Marriott. I think that's in the Grand Rapids area. That's one of their highest rated properties that suburban ends runs. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one, Hilton Gardens. So I wanted to pull up, that's, that's basically the end of the application. I wanted to go in a little and talk a little bit about the public infrastructure. Um, so this, these numbers are kind of preliminary and are, will probably change. In fact, some of them have already changed a little bit. Um, but those will, the final numbers will be built into the brownfield plan uh, that you guys will look at next month. But um, one of the benefits of this project is that we're going to be able to, to do some public infrastructure. So we talked about loop in the water main, right. which is a benefit not only to the project but to, to the city taxpayers and the residents in that area. But we're also going to be, you know, adding public parking. And there's a $250,000 line item right here, which unfortunately this it was over here, which didn't get printed, and I didn't have it over here, but, but that's a placeholder number, and we have updated numbers that I just got earlier this week that I'll go through with you. But basically, that is to resurface the South Loop Drive. Basically, from as you go down First Street and you go around the loop, you go around the fish cleaning station, go past the cabanas, and you kind of get up to the halfway point of the parking lot, you can see where there's a definite break in the concrete. So it would be from there all the way around the loop. Oh, okay. Could be resurfaced as part of that. That <clears throat> qualifies as public infrastructure. Um, there's also some um, some of the parking that we talked about, additional parking that the developer wanted that was agreed to put in, and then we were also going to pave some of the, the gravel parking areas that were along the edges there right now. Yeah. So we got estimates for all of that, um, and they came back a lot higher than two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, I was just going to ask how so, you do that. But, but there's some value engineering that Jeff and Spicer are going to do between now and the time that we get the brownfield plan together to bring that number back down. So they're working on it from that end. I'm going to be looking at it from the city's financial perspective as to how much we can afford. Some of this public infrastructure the developer is going to pay for and we'll get reimbursed for. So the developer can build public infrastructure on behalf of the city. Right. So there's some moving pieces there that we've got to kind of put together, but that's uh, part of the benefit of this project um, would be sounds. being able to get that resurfaced to handle the traffic. Well, it sounds like they're willing to work pretty much with you, the, the developer, and that, uh, isn't it? Or are they yeah. bucking anything? It's, uh... No, I mean, I think, I think they have been. I, I, again, I think one of the questions is, not does the project need incentives because I think they've demonstrated that it does but what level of incentives and that's a city council decision yeah. but we have to kind of staff has to kind of pre-negotiate that because we've got to build it into these plans right so there's it's there's a lot of moving pieces here I'd have um, to say. one of the things that Roman talked about which this number could change too once we kind of put the numbers more final together but we had slotted three hundred thousand dollars for this revolving loan fund and I, I would anticipate doing something similar with the Gateway uh, project when we get that brownfield plan when it comes together. And so let's say we end up at 500000 maybe that's the number between the two projects, or seven fifty, whatever it is, whatever kind of makes sense. But that would give money for people in the community and developers to come in and be able to fund things 
without having to go through a bunch of a bunch of hoops necessarily and then pay us back so they could do site assessments and what, what other kinds of work yeah you, you can that? use it as a, a, a loan oh, so yeah. where where they do have to pay you back but you can use it as grant and just uh, for them to come to the community right Correct. Yep. 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 So, so that's nice because sometimes it's just those upfront costs are difficult, you know, to yeah. kind of get uh, to know whether the project's viable. So, you know, that's something that this board can say, no, we don't want to do because uh, we've never done it before. But I think it's a it's a worthy thing to do, and I think a lot of these bigger projects are starting are funding those. I think the state probably encourages that, mm -hmm. um, and it's an opportunity to to help future development too, because that's almost correct. anywhere in the city. Well, it's can a be carrot. considered a brownfield. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you, if you don't have the upfront cost or you're hesitant about the upfront cost, we've got this right. as a viable option. Okay. Yeah. So I, I had penciled that number in 300,000. Whether that's the right number, it kind of depends on some of these other moving pieces. Sure. Um, I'll add to that. The, the nice thing of having it is it doesn't require involvement from the state. So from a timing perspective, yeah. it, you, you can approve it and they can get going on it right away. Yeah. So that's one of the benefits too. It yeah, can really keep things moving. Keep it local. So kind of as written here, it's about a 50-50 split between the cost, between the public infrastructure and the developer. But keep in mind, some of these items that are under the, um, some of these infrastructure improvements were things that originally we had talked to the developer about them paying. So that, to me, that's kind of where this conversation needs to go a little bit to see what flexibility is there. And I know the city manager, uh, Bill, is here and is probably going to start having those conversations after the meeting today. Kind of, you know, assuming you approve this to go ahead, then we can start talking more in earnest with them. Um, but I would like to pull up um, a couple other things just to kind of show you. Um, yeah. Uh, that's the wrong one. So this just gives you an idea, like uh, here is where, again, we talked about where the stormwater infiltration basin would be. Right. And it'll be natural. It doesn't really take away from much in the park there, but it is on city property. But as you know, over in this area by the tennis courts, uh -huh. we get a lot of ponding and things. And so mm -hmm. when they resurface the roads right. and crown them properly, we need somewhere for that drainage to go. So some of that will go over to here. You can see they, they have a uh, catch basin okay. and yeah. piping it over to there. And there may be some from this parking lot too that get piped over to there. So that will just help with some of that water control. Sure. And we talked about um, these parking spots here being put in place to kind of offset some of the stuff that they might be using over in the in the big parking lot. Um, the lower parking lot that you get used to get to the south pier mm -hmm. is uh, potentially going to be redone as part of that loop project. Okay. Um, let me pull up the other one. Yeah. Here's a drawing that kind of shows you the water main loop. So right now there is a water main here that goes down to Harbor Drive, yeah, but it's yeah. a dead end. So they would be extending the loop down here yeah. and looping it back to the end of First Street, huh. which would help improve water flow and fire flow and all of that. And if I remember, Jeff had that on a strategic plan or something, but I think doesn't did, this? I think that was on. Okay. This is a way to pay for that. So yeah, because this is this has always been kind of a you know less than ideal okay. um, because of that. It's yeah, not looped. that's true. And then the other thing I wanted to. Yeah, this just shows the public parking a little clearer. This is the this is the curb cut that they were talking about here to get into that parking lot. Sure. And then I, I also think, uh, although Jeff and Sean will sort that out, but as part of the, the loop resurfacing back up to the north a little bit, the, the big parking lot is underutilized a lot because there's it's hard to get to. So there may be another curb cut on that side as well, just so people can get in and out better, which I think will make that parking lot be used more. Um, so anyway, those are those are things that Jeff and Sean are, are kind of sorting through. Um, so I didn't really have anything else uh, to talk about. I mean, it, it's kind of a high-level overview of the project. Sure. Um, if the BRA were to approve the agenda item as written, then the next steps in this would be Roman will continue working on the, the Brownfield plan, which is pretty much got done. He's, we've kind of been working on parallel paths. Um, and We'll have to look at the TIF tables, we'll have to talk to the developer, uh, we'll have to start working on the 381 work plan. 
we would schedule this for another meeting in January. We need to decide whether that's going to be the 4th or the 11th, depending on people's yeah. availability. Um, and then we have to have a public hearing at the city council level, which would probably be scheduled for the 18th. And then we would have action on that plan, on the brownfield plan, that presumably, if this body approved it, first of all, on the 4th or 11th, on the 18th. So that's kind of the timeline that we're looking oh, at. Oh, I thought the public notice would have to be out uh, like 30 days or 60. It's only 10-day notice. Only 10. Yeah, okay. so we would, we would get it out. Yeah. Um, George, George has said it doesn't, the public notice can just be done at any time. It doesn't require any special approval. It just requires right. a public notice. Right. So we would probably get that out even before the end of December, um, presumably. And, and then if we had to cancel, we could always do that, but at least it's in the public's right. hands right. sooner. Right, right, um, right. So yeah. that's, that's kind of where we're at. I don't know, um, do you have any questions? This is a very important and complex project for the city. There's a lot of moving pieces, but we're trying real hard to make sure everything's kind of pulling together in the right direction. I'm trying to stay on top of it as things come through so that I can limit my questions when I'm in person, so. Yeah. Um, uh, no, a lot of information. Yeah, yeah I, like I said, I pretty much watch all the other meetings, so I kind of know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, like I said, we have a lot of being in the planning with Shelley. We've gone through this, so yeah, we're pretty much approved. Well, we pretty much approved. So, it, it, um, so I guess then, um, if there aren't any questions, then I probably need to take see if there's support for that. Yes. Uh, All right. And you're looking for a motion to approve. Is it an application or? So basically, it'd be the motion as it was written on there. Okay. Well, it says at this time, the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority can act to accept the application, authorize Fishbeck to continue work on the Brownfield Plan, <coughs> Act 381 Work Plan and Development and Reimbursement Agreement. And build a developer for this work not to in a not to exceed amount of twenty thousand dollars per the brownfield policy. Okay. And that's what we're going to vote on. All right. So I need a motion. <laughs> I need a well. I I'll make a motion to approve as stated, right. um, unless I need to restate. Okay. Yeah, and I, I'll second. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So it's all approved, right? Yeah. Uh, opposed, no. Okay. So then we're down to staff reports, or are you? Yep, yeah, yeah, we've got more to talk about. So um, the other big project, obviously, is the Gateway project. And as you know, we got the Eagle Grant loan. Um, so that process is also being handled on the city's behalf through Fishback. But um, Little River Holdings also has environmental consultants that are working on the project. So Roman, can you kind of talk a little bit about where we're at with that project? Sure. So the grant loan came in, uh, and basically how that works is uh, there's specific activities that are, are designated under the grant and the loan. Uh, initially, we have to have a work plan that's approved through for, for any activity. No work can happen under an EGLE grant loan until EGLE has approved work plans for those activities. The first work plan went in to uh, basically prepare bid specs for demolition, get a demolition contractor uh, in queue and, and that kind of thing. So uh, again, they, they would like to see demolition happen you know, not too far off. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be some uh, investigation included with some of those. So that work plan, the first work plan's been approved. Uh, I think one of the things that probably gonna be waiting on, there's, there's not a, a bunch of, there's, there still needs to be some clarity on the, on the development schedule, the development team, and what's being proposed. We don't want to uh, start incurring costs under either one of those things until that's firmed up, and I don't want to step on, you know, Ed's, Ed's been having a lot of conversations with those folks, but uh, long story short is that that grant loan can move as quick as we want it to, really. Uh, the work plans take a few weeks for Eagle to process. That's weeks, so it's not months. So that that's a good thing, and they kind of want you to piecemeal those. So don't put the whole project in there because it's easier for them to just bite 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 it off. And so that, that that's what we're doing. Julie Lowe um, was the individual the coordinator at Eagle, but now they've had since had someone else. Um, start Sarah May Andrews and she's good and between the two of them 
we have good contacts at the state to keep this moving uh, to the extent that we can based on the development plans. So that's that's where that's at. Fishbeck is the third party oversight consultant. So West Shore Engineering is the uh, the uh, development team's consultant. Uh, under the Eagle grant and loan, uh, they require third party oversight and they provide funds to do that. So it's not something that you, you, you're gonna have to um, take out of your general budget or whatever. So uh, that, that will be covered, but we review everything that they submit and they've never done one of these. So it's probably a good thing that, you know, we're, we're looking at all that and processing it, but uh, we will review work plans. We'll review any expenses that come in. We'll review activities conducted on the site, all that, all that stuff on behalf of the city. Sure. And uh, because you, you have obligations or agreements that the city has signed and we have to make sure that those are followed and yeah, right. there's not any liability that could you know come back on the, on the city. So right. uh, that kind of summarizes where things are at. Quarterly reporting, we have to uh, summarize activities that happen every quarter, submit reports. Uh, there's a final report at the end of the project. So those things are will all be handled to minimize Ed's involvement. Really, he just combs through our summaries and uh, that's just kind of falls on our shoulders. Okay. And one of the things that came up um, is obviously um, the developer is anxious to get those buildings down, mm -hmm. but we have to make real sure that um, that we have the proper approvals for that because that loan is going to be paid back through brownfield tax increment financing. Okay. And so we've got to make sure that that can happen. And, and so Roman and, and Fishbeck and, and they're having conversations with the state to see. But the issue potentially there is, is that this project, the gateway project, might also have to go through the whole brownfield project and get a plan approved before the demo can actually happen. So those conversations are happening, but not, not convinced that that is going to be able to happen. Even so, before the demo happens? Well, because because the tax increment financing is being used to pay back to the To pay loan. back the demo. So the you could maybe do it if, if knowing that the developer would be at risk to pay back some of that money, and I don't know if they want to be. So th those conversations, that's TB TBD, I guess, is the status of that right okay. now. But I think... It's not. They're not going to be down by the end of January. I, I, that's for sure. No, and I would. But I would assume that I, I know how anxious they are to get those down and show some movement. So yeah. I, I would assume that the demo cost is is relatively small percentage in in the overall project. But it's it's not fifty percent, but it's not insignificant either. Okay. Yeah, and you know the other piece of that, like like we mentioned for the Hampton Inn project, is. You got to look at the back end of the schedule too. When does the hotel want to open? Right. And so it may be that if the schedule slips, that it doesn't just slip those few months because of the state's delays or whatever. It may slip longer than that. True. Um, so, but but the whole the point is there's a lot of forward momentum and forward progress on this, and we've got money we didn't have before because of the Eagle Grant loan. So I think we're we're in a really good place with that, um, personally. But. And another question is, as you walk the streets, we do, or you know, when are they going to start this, or when are they going to start the hotel? The people, the public, don't understand the backgrounds that have to be done, and that's why you kind of wonder, gee, I don't know, they put a fence up, it's been there five weeks, you know, I don't know, nothing else has happened, but like you said, they don't understand the background of it. But yeah. thank you, if there's anything yeah. else. So the, the, the saying in the business is, is uh, the, the, the more free money, the longer and more involved the process, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if somebody was just funding this all with their own checkbook, they could make it happen oh, you know, yeah. really yeah. quickly. But when you start layering yeah. different programs and different state agencies, it becomes more, it just takes more time. And but the thing with it is that money's out there. If, yes. if you can take, you know, have the time and the people to write the grants. Yeah, yeah. Plan. yeah. yeah that's true. All right, is there anything else, gentlemen? Um, there, there might be a, a a component to the Gateway Brownfield plan that, that this body hasn't been involved with before. We don't know that yet, but when, once we get more information from them, we'll bring that back to the board. It's just, this is even, the Gateway Project's even more involved than the, than the Hampton Inn. Yeah. And there's a lot more public yeah. infrastructure involved that this body yeah. might actually have to get involved with, but we won't know that quite yet. So just kind of uh, stay tuned for future details. All right. Most of the environmental remediation, that's already taken place over the years, right? Um, tank removals and, well, except for that dry cleaning business. I don't know how much. 
Roman, you have a better handle on that. Yeah, a lot, yeah, the tanks, for the most part, to everybody's knowledge, should be gone. But there could be some relics that exist underneath some of those when they start doing demo. I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, you know, encounter some of that. Uh, relative to contamination, there's still quite a bit present. So when they start digging for footings and putting utilities in, yeah. I want to probably excavate and truck it to landfill. Uh, any not thinking there's going to be dewatering, but if that is necessary, that'd be managed. And then because it is present in the groundwater and it isn't designed to clean up everything entirely, uh, there will be some that remains and so vapor barriers and that kind of thing will have to be a part of the construction. Okay. So there'll still be some of that. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you for that. Then, uh, is that it? Or? Well, we need to talk about next meeting. Days. Well, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. Next yeah but meeting. I don't have anything more on staff reports. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, next meeting date, it's up to you, either the 4th or the 11th when you so get here. So Megan can't make either. Oh, Megan can't make She's either. She's practicing being a snowbird. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. So my preference would be the 11th because it gives us more time to get all these loose ends tied up, but I don't know if that works for everybody's schedule. Oh. Uh, it does on mine, the Tuesday the 11th. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Does that work for you? Okay. It, I just have some things that I'm unsure about as okay. well. Um, is there any way? I mean, do you have to be present, or could I? I was just going to ask that. Or did you have? Yeah, I check with okay. George. Okay. So first of all, the authorization, the emergency authorization, expires at the end of December, and the other reasons, valid reasons for that, don't apply here. So um, Megan, Megan asked the same question. Okay. So we, it doesn't have, there's nothing sacred about the 4th or 11th, it could be, it could be somewhere in between, those are just the, the standard Tuesdays, uh, right. but it can't be after the 11th because I have to have time to get, sure. if this body, assuming it acts on three, well, two different items at least on that meeting, I have to get those to well, That's what I mean, yeah, you got, yeah, we got to, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but if that, if, you know, we can look at the calendar and see if that's... Sure. Yeah, that's right. what I was just doing. Here you go. This one, oh, there you go. Yeah, January. Fourth and the what? Well, gee, almighty, we don't have much of a choice. I don't, any day's all right for me, I guess. It would be in the afternoon, or would it not? I, you know what? I, I, I need a quorum, so I, we have to be able to make sure we have at least three people. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know what Marlene's schedule is because obviously she's not here. But this far out, I can make just about anything work. So. In the afternoon too. Sure. In the afternoon, uh, Captain. Oh well, like I said, I. <laughs> or you don't know. You're not sure yet. Oh well, gee. Be positive on. Yeah. So, so the fourth is. Uh, I got to get to the right month here. Sorry. Yeah. Fourth is a Tuesday. The fourth is a Tuesday. So. Um, so is the eleventh. We could do it any, you know, pretty much any time that week, or we could do it on the Monday or the tenth or the Tuesday. No, uh, you know. Well, so, no, you want it before the. Well, the biggest problem for me isn't necessarily the day; it's uh -huh. the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If it was I, at six thirty. I was going to say. I could be here. I could be here whatever day we, we're. We we can schedule the meeting whenever we need. It's to better for me in the evening too because I have like he. We're, yeah, if we could job. do something like say. Six thirty. I just want yeah six 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 thirty. If we could do something then, then either whatever day works best for we everybody can't else. Do I that can on, on Tuesdays because that's a city council meeting. But we could do it. Um, we could do it on that Monday, the tenth, if that works. Monday, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you could do it the tenth. Does that, that work? So, yeah. so like Monday, the we can. Monday, it's the tenth. Day that's part. That's oh, 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 yeah, oh, I'm sorry. More difficult to be yeah. able to get back from where I have, I may possibly okay. be. So. So it would be January tenth. Then at 6 p.m.? Thank you. Yes, 6 o'clock yeah, yeah, is fine. Here in Chambers? Yeah. Okay. okay. With that said, the only thing that could hiccup that is if there's another meeting schedule. I don't have that in front of me. I don't think there is, though. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, it wouldn't. Well, we say it too. Okay. Well, then, are we set on a date, then, correct? Yep. So then we get down to a members I discussion so, yeah. if we have any members that want to know. discuss. We'll start with you, Captain. You're very quiet over there. You're going to discuss. I'm that. always quiet. I just listen. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> and then Shelly asks all the questions. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. Anything for you, Shelly? No, I think I covered everything I had questions Pretty on good. today. No, I'm, uh, I'm good, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, you answered everything we wanted to know. Those stuff we don't want to know. So, uh, <laughs> if we're all set, then I take a motion to adjourn.
I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. All in favor, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, and this meeting is adjourned. Thank, Thank you very you. much. See you on the uh, 10th oh, at 10th. 6 o'clock.